Hi, I'm Rebecca from Ingvid. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a small trick that you can use to improve your English writing, especially when you're writing complex sentences. I'm going to explain to you exactly what a complex sentence is and also how to punctuate it properly so that you can get a higher mark if you're going for your exam, like the IELTS or the TOEFL, or if you're submitting an essay at university, if you're writing a business report, or if you're applying for a job, okay? Because this little comma, this little punctuation mark, makes the difference between a correct sentence and an incorrect sentence, all right? And I'll show you exactly when to use it and how to use it, okay? So let's get started. Now, first of all, what is a complex sentence? A complex sentence in English is a sentence which has an independent clause and a dependent clause. Okay, that's great, you say, but what's a clause? Okay, not Santa Claus. We're not talking about Santa Claus here. We're talking about a clause in English, in English grammar. So a clause is just a group of words that has a subject and a verb. So what's the difference then between independent clause or dependent clause? Well, we know that both of them are clauses so both of them have a subject and a verb, but the independent one actually can stand on its own. It's a sentence by itself. And the dependent clause is not a sentence by itself. It cannot stand by itself, all right? So it depends on the other part of the sentence to make it whole, all right? So let's look at the example. If I say, we'll cancel the picnic, just by itself, that's a sentence, right? It makes sense. It's a complete thought. So that is an independent clause in this sentence. If I say, if it starts raining. Yeah, if it starts raining, what? So because that's incomplete, that is a dependent clause. All right. Now, in a complex sentence, we see an independent clause and at least one dependent clause. All right. So we start like this, we'll cancel the picnic if it starts raining. Now that's a full sentence. There's a, a statement that I'm making and there's some sort of a situation that I'm attaching to it with the dependent clause. So when we have a sentence that has an independent clause at the beginning and a dependent clause after that, we need no punctuation in the middle at all, okay? So we just say, we'll cancel the picnic if it starts raining, all right? No punctuation needed in the middle, no comma needed. But let's look what, at what happens if we turn that sentence around, the same sentence, okay, to make it easier. This time we're going to start with the dependent clause and then uh, finish with the independent clause. The meaning will be the same, but the way we write it is different. So here we say, if it starts raining, comma, we'll cancel the picnic. Okay? All right. So you're saying to me, Rebecca, really that comma makes so much difference? Yes, it does. In formal business writing or in formal exam writing, if you keep writing a lot of complex sentences, which you will write because you should write complex sentences, it's more educated, it's more advanced, but if you don't write them correctly, then it's kind of a shame. And if the examiner, let's say on your IELTS, sees that you've written a lot of complex sentences, that's very good. But if again and again, he or she sees that you didn't put the comma there, then they know that you haven't understood the principle of how to write a complex sentence. And it's really so easy because all you had to do was to know where to put the comma or not to put the comma. So as I said, here, where we started with the independent clause and ended with the dependent clause, there's no comma. But if we start with the dependent and then we have the independent, then we do need a comma. Now, just listen when I'm actually saying it. Because in real life, if I was speaking these sentences out loud, I would actually pause. Not because I see a comma when I'm speaking, but because that's how we talk. So here, First, let's listen to this. We'll cancel the picnic if it starts raining. It's just like one long sentence, right? But here I'll say, 
if it starts raining, we'll cancel the picnic. Now, did you feel and hear that pause? That pause is represented by this comma. Got it? Okay. So I hope you understood this example and what it means when we're talking about an independent clause and a dependent clause. All right. But just to be sure, let's look at another example now. So we ordered pizza after the game ended. We ordered pizza is the independent clause, right? Because that's like a complete thought, a complete sentence. After the game ended, this is incomplete even though it has a subject and a verb, but it's incomplete, right? If I just said to you, after the game ended, it doesn't mean anything, right? It's incomplete. So that makes it dependent. So in that sentence, we have no comma. We ordered pizza after the game ended. Okay, it's one smooth sentence. Got it? But look what happens when the dependent clause comes first. After the game, sorry, uh, we need, to write here, okay, after the game ended, comma, we ordered pizza, right? Now the dependent clause after the game ended is first and the independent clause we ordered pizza is after that. So whenever the dependent clause comes first, you want to put a comma after that. So it'll sound like this if you're speaking. After the game ended, we ordered pizza, okay? As I said, we have a natural kind of pause in that place. Now, this is true when we're speaking. It makes it easier for people to understand us. And it also makes it much easier when somebody's reading your writing with a complex sentence because we expect this kind of mental pause in the writing. And these are simple examples, but let's suppose you were writing about something more serious writing about business, or you're writing about politics, you're writing about something else, then it's going to make it very difficult to understand without the comma. And the reader is mentally looking for that comma to divide the ideas, to divide the thoughts, and to make it easier to understand your writing and whatever you're trying to convey, okay? So don't just think, oh, one little comma, what difference does it make? It does make a big difference. And definitely, it'll make a big difference to your marks or your score if you keep leaving out these commas in complex sentences, okay? Now, one other clue to know, for you to know, that something is a dependent clause is to look for these words, which are called subordinating conjunctions. Not very interesting, but I'll tell you what they are. And when you hear or see one of these words or write one of these words, then you know that there is a dependent clause coming up in a complex sentence. And these words are before, so we could say here, before the game ended, we ordered pizza. That would also be a dependent clause, right? Or when the game ended, or because the game ended, or whatever, okay? Because, since, although, even though, if, unless, okay? These kind of words, there are more words like this, but I'm giving you the most common examples. So whenever you're using one of these words in that dependent clause, make sure that you put what? A comma after it, and then put your independent clause. But if you wrote the independent clause first, then no comma necessary, all right? I hope this is making sense to you, and let's really master it now by looking at a few more sentences. Okay, so now you're gonna help me to decide whether we need to put a comma in these sentences or whether we don't. You decide, okay, along with me. So, number one, although we advertised the job, we didn't get many applications. Now, just for you to know, while I'm reading it, I'm gonna try not to give the answer away, so I'm not gonna pause, even though normally I might pause or anything like that in all of them, okay? So, what do you think? Do we need a comma here anywhere? Remember the rules. If the sentence starts with a dependent clause, then you need a comma uh, before the independent clause. But if the sentence starts with an independent clause, a complete sentence, then 
and then it finishes with a dependent clause, then no comma necessary, okay? You can see that here. So let's analyze this first sentence. This word, although, is it one of those subordinating conjunctions? Actually, yes. So there's your big clue that we will need a comma here because we're starting with a dependent clause. So let's see where we put the comma, okay? Although we advertise the job, okay, that's where we put it. Although we advertise the job, because we have here a subject, we have here a verb, and then we have more subject. We didn't get many applications, okay? So although we advertise the job is incomplete, that's a dependent clause. We didn't get many applications is a complete sentence. That's the independent clause. All right. Got it. Good for you. Number two. I closed the window because it was cold. Does that sentence need a comma? Look at it. Okay. So what's happening here? I closed the window. All right. Subject, verb. So, I close the window is a complete sentence, right? A complete sentence, right? It means independent clause here. And because it was cold is the dependent clause, but it comes after. So when you have an independent clause followed by a dependent clause, you need no comma. So this sentence is absolutely fine the way it is. I close the window because it was cold. No comma necessary, all right? Let's look at number three and analyze it together, okay? They're going on strike unless they get a raise. They're going on strike unless they get a raise. So, where's that word that we're looking for? Subordinating conjunction, okay? It's here, okay? So this part, after unless, right, is the dependent clause. And so is it first or is it second? It's second, right? So if it's second, that means we don't need a comma in that sentence. It's fine the way it is. They're going on strike unless they get a raise. Okay? Good. Number four. Before the library closes, I need to return this book. So what do we do there? Do we need a comma? All right, let's look at this uh, sentence, the first part of it. Before the library closes. So you have a clue because you have this word before, which is another one of those subordinating conjunctions that introduces our dependent clause. So, before the library closes, comma, I need to return this book because now we had a dependent clause first, then we need the comma, and then the independent clause. And in real life, the way I would say it is, before the library closes, I need to return this book, okay? So that's also when you're speaking, you don't, you have a kind of a, you don't obviously write a comma, but you do pause. All right. Next, number five. I like to watch TV before I go to sleep. What about that? Do we need a comma there? So let's analyze it. I like to watch TV. That's an independent clause. Then we have the word before right, which is that conjunction. So this is telling us this is the dependent clause here, and the dependent clause is in the second position, so we need no comma. That one is fine. I like to watch TV before I go to sleep. Good. And the last one, whenever you're ready, I can take your order. Okay, when you go to a restaurant, lots of time, the waiter or waitress will say this. Whenever you're ready, I can take your order. So what do we do if we are writing it? Do we need a comma? Okay, so let's analyze it together. Whenever you're ready. So whenever is like when, and it's one of those subordinating conjunctions. So it tells us that this part is gonna be the dependent clause. So whenever you're ready, comma, I can take your order. Okay, so dependent and then independent. So remember the rule, dependent clause first, then you have a comma, then the independent clause. Independent clause first, no comma, followed by the dependent clause. All right? Now, I hope you understood these examples. I think that we worked through it really nicely so that you could get it. But 
of course, you're going to need to practice, right? You want to practice a lot so that you get it not just right now, but later and next week and the week after that and forever. Like, there's no point in learning uh, in watching 10 videos and finally going away with nothing. Instead of that, whichever video you choose to watch, really master it and say, you know what? I hope that I never have to uh, make a mistake in this area ever again. I'm going to get it. So, in order to do that, go to our website, www.ingvid.com. Do the quiz that's there. It will really help you. We have at least 10 examples. So you can practice it some more and then practice writing your own sentences with independent and dependent clauses and also understanding exactly what that means. Okay? All right. Now, what you can do also is subscribe. So I can keep bringing you lots of good lessons and keep making more lessons for one thing. All right. It really helps me when you subscribe. And also, if you subscribe, if you decide to subscribe, don't forget that now YouTube uh, kind of requires you to ring a bell. There's like a bell icon next to the subscribe button. And if you uh, click on that, as well as after you subscribe, then they will send you reminders every time I have a new lesson. Or, and that is true for my lessons or any other uh, YouTube subscriptions that you have. So make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell. Okay? So thanks very much for watching and uh, go to Ingvid, do the quiz, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.